Hi, and welcome to Lucida Academy. Today, you are going to learn how to design CWD and transmitters using cascaded MZI lattice filters. You might be wondering, what does it mean? A CWD and transmitter is a component based on wavelength division multiplexing. It is a technology that uses different channels to carry signals at different wavelengths that are then combined in a single optical fiber or waveguide simultaneously. So the goal of a CWDM demultiplexer, for instance, is to take all the incoming uh, wavelengths which are carried over a single fiber or a single waveguide and split them into several channels with one wavelength per channel. Similarly, a multiplexer will receive incoming wavelengths in separate channels and its objective is to combine them into a single fiber or waveguide. The way we want to achieve this is by using MZ lattice filters. An MZ lattice filter is a filter based on several Max Zender interferometers, which are built using directional couplers. In a simple MZ lattice filter, you will have two incoming wavelengths, lambda 1 and lambda 2, which are then split into two separate waveguides. What we want to do here is to cascade several MZ lattice filters in order to obtain a more complex circuit, which is capable of splitting more than just two wavelengths. In this example, we have eight incoming wavelengths, which are split into eight channels. As I mentioned, the basic building block of a Max Zander interferometer is a directional coupler. For this example, we are going to use the component called directional coupler S power from SciFab. This is a component where you can specify the power fraction that you want to couple into the cross waveguide, and then the length of the straight section so this part is calculated automatically to deliver the desired power fraction that you have specified. Our second step is to define an MZI filter class. So this is how we do it. We use a circuit cell, uh, which is a simple way to define circuits in IPCIS. And the first thing we do is to define properties. Here, the important properties are the power couplings, which is a list of uh, power fractions that you want to couple into the cross arm, and the length of this list determines how many directional couplers are going to be used to create this MZ lattice filter. The second thing you want to specify are the delay lengths. The length of this list is going to be the same as the length of the power couplings minus one. The delay lengths are going to be used to design, to draw the arms that are going to connect the directional couplers to each other. Other properties that you can specify are a minimum band radius, and you can, there are also some phase properties that can be used to perform uh, simulations to study the influence of phase errors. Next, we define a get connector function. Uh, this is a function that uh, returns a connector, so it defines uh, the way the arms are drawn uh, between the different directional couplers. This function will be used later uh, to define the default connectors. So first, we specify the child cells of our circuit, which are all the directional couplers we need for the MZI lattice filter. Then we define the default connectors, which are drawn using the getConnector function we defined earlier. The specified delay lengths are used to calculate the total length of the arms. Finally, we define place specifications where we define where we want to place our directional couplers in space, and then we define the external port names of our circuit. The next step is to use the MZ lattice filter to design multiplexers. First, we are going to design a two-way multiplexer. It is a multiplexer where you have two wavelengths in the input and you split them into two different channels at the output. The first thing we are going to define are the power couplings. So this is a list of power couplings taken from the following paper, uh, which have been optimized and simulated. For this reason, this is a locked property. It means it cannot be changed from the outside anymore. Next, we are going to calculate the delay length. These are calculated using the center wavelength, which you can define as the input property. The FSR, which is the free spectral range, and you can also define that uh, when you instantiate this component. 
and then the group index and the effective index, which are taken from the waveguide model. After we calculate L and L pi, we use the following uh, values uh, for the delay arms of the MZI. Here we can see a simulation of the multiplexer, and you can see how uh, the wavelength at 1.55 and the wave wavelength at 1.56 are split into two separate outputs. The blue curve represents the transmission from input one, so the bottom waveguide, to output one, which is also the bottom output waveguide. And the green curve is the output from input one to output two, which is the top waveguide. Now it's up to you. So you can uh, check out the training session about the two-way WDM on Lucid Academy. Uh, you can also open a training material in PyCharm. There is a file called mooks2.py. You can run it and try to play around with it. Um, so you can go into training, uh, topical training, WDM transmitter NZI, and we have the file mooks2. Here you can see uh, the class definition. And then at the bottom, uh, we use this class to design a MOOCs2. Here you can change some properties. Uh, you can change the FSR of, your, of the component. You can change the center wavelength. And you can rerun the script and see how the simulation changes. The next step is taking this one stage up and design a four-way multiplexer. So how are we going to do this? Um, well, we have two stages. Um, this is the first stage and this is the second stage. In the first stage, we use a MOOCs2, which is tuned to the desired FSR divided by two. In the second stage, uh, we use the frequencies uh, that come out from stage one and split them further. The goal of stage one is to split the odd and even frequencies into two different channels. And stage two takes these incoming frequencies and splits them further. The final outcome is that we have four input wavelengths split into four different channels. So we can look at the stages one by one and see what happens. So you can see here um, that in output one, we have wavelength one and three. So this is what we have here, wavelength one and three. And then in output two, we have wavelength two and four. And this is also what we have here on the green curve, wavelength two and four. Then stage two down takes the odd frequencies, so wavelength one and two, and splits them further. So you can see now uh, these two wavelengths, which were transmitted on the same channel at the output of stage one, are now split further into two separate channels. And we have the same thing, uh, similar thing for stage two up. So the even frequencies are uh, coming as an input and are, they are split further. So the second and the first frequencies are now split in, into different channels. And we can now look at the, the simulation of the total circuit. And this is what we obtain. Our circuit has split the frequencies into four different channels. Just like for the MOOCs 2, you can look at this training session on Lucid Academy. Or you can also open a training material in PyCharm. Uh, you open the file MOOCs4.py. And once again, you can change the FSR, change the center wavelength, uh, inspect the plots, and try to understand what is going on inside the circuit. Now we take this one step further. So we want to create an eight-way multiplexer. We have eight incoming wavelengths that are going to split into eight different output channels. So once again, we divide this into two stages. The first stage this time is a MOOCs4, which is what we have just designed. So at stage one, we split these incoming wavelengths into four different channels. So we have wavelengths one and five in the first channel, three and seven in the second, two and six in the third, and four and eight in the fourth. The MOOCs4 will be tuned on the, F the specified FSR divided by two, and then the stage two is composed by four MOOCs2. And these are tuned to the frequencies incoming from stage one. And they will split these frequencies further, obtaining an eight-way demultiplexer. Here we can see the total transmission, where we have split eight frequencies in eight channels. Just like for MOOCs 4, you can also visualize the transmission uh, at each different stage. And this is done in the script. If you open it in PyCharm, you can see that. 
Now you can go on Lucid Academy and check out the training session about the A2A WDM, or you can also open a training material in PyCharm and play around uh, like you've done for the previous two MOOCs. Uh, you can change the FSR, change the center wavelength, and inspect the plots and inspect the plots and try to understand what is going on. So far, we have seen how to design a MOOCs 8, we had to use a MOOCs 4 in the first stage. We have also seen how in the MOOCs 4, we had to use a MOOCs 2 in the first stage. We can take this approach and make it parametric. So if we have a number of stages n, this will give us a number of channels 2 to the power of n plus 1. In the first stage, we are going to use an n minus 1 way multiplexer, which is tuned on half the FSR. And in the second stage, we will then use n MOOCs 2, which are tuned to the frequencies coming out of stage 1. If you head over on Lucid Academy, you can see how this is implemented, or you can also open the file moocsparametric.py from your Lucida Academy samples. In this file, you can change some parameters, such as the number of stages, the FSR and the center wavelength, and you can inspect the plots and understand what happens. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.